Oh, hey, camera. Oh, shit, how long have you been here? It's me, Dr. Mike, for Renaissance Periodization. I represent so many other companies. Gee whiz, it just gets boring. By the way, in a sense, this video is brought to you by the RP Diet Coach app. So check that out. It'll do your diet for you. It'll tell you what to eat and when. It'll plan out all your meals. You still get to pick the foods, but it guides you on all the macros. It'll message you when uh, it's time to eat. It really is like having a diet coach in your pocket. So if you're into like hardcore results driven diet stuff, it's the shit. If you're into like eating one meal a day of fuck all and getting zero results, don't download it. In any case, today we are going to learn how to do coils for the Goyles. Oi. It says barbell curls on my list of things to do. I'm gonna demonstrate this with an easy bar because the principles are exactly transferable. The only caveat, I say caveat, but what do I know? I'm not Latin. Is that you have to make sure your wrists and elbows are okay with doing a straight bar. But if they're not, the easy bar can come in super handy. So with that being said, world's longest intro, shut up Mike, let's get to the first tip. First tip to make sure you heal your biceps better is to choose the appropriate grip. The answer on here is it um, totally up to individual preference. You're looking for a few things. You're looking for a grip that is comfortable for your elbows, comfortable for your shoulders, and in which you can really feel the biceps working. For some people, a wider grip works really well. For some people, a closer grip works really well. There are no wrong answers here. You just have to make sure you're picking the grip that works best for you at that time. So it's totally fine to do like a few months of close grip, kind of burn out on it, switch to wide grip, and any easy bar becomes two variations. Now, if wide or close just never works for you, it hurts your elbows, hurts your shoulders, never feel your biceps, then don't bother with the grip that doesn't work. Next tip for you guys to play around with, I'm sure you're used to playing around with tips at your day job, is to figure out if you like to curl more straight up and down or more in an arcing fashion. And again, there's no correct answer here, it's just how you get the best feel in your biceps. So straight up and down, sometimes these are called drag curls and a few other things. I've done a few curls and drag, if you know what I mean. So what you'll do is you'll kind of curl just like this. You'll curl down, the bar kind of travels in more or less a straight line. And if you feel your biceps a ton, this is great. This is a great exercise for people that tend to feel like their front delts are way too involved in an arc curl, and they're like, I can't feel my biceps. Sometimes that works well for them. The other alternative, sometimes it's good to take a little bit of a wider stance. If you're skinny enough to do this, you can pin your elbows and your hips, and then you arc. The entire motion looks like a U shape, and then it really can stimulate the biceps a shitload. There's no guarantee that one of those will work better than the other. Try both, see how you feel. Best case scenario, they both are winners in their own separate ways. And then you just have two variations on uh, one uh, individual exercise. Sometimes people just really don't like one or the other. Uh, let me know in the comments which one of these has worked best for you. What to do with the elbows. A couple different camps on the internet for this. Some people say you should keep your elbows pinned to your sides, and thus the curl will look something like this. Right, elbows don't really move much. Bit of an interesting range of motion here. It can work, works super great. For some people, it can really isolate the biceps and get a great mind-muscle connection. Other folks like to let the elbows roll more freely and curl sort of to the neck slash face area. So they curl like this, and then slow eccentric down. Notice my elbows do move. You'll get some people saying that, now hold on, if your elbows move like that, using your shoulders and not your biceps, but it turns out your biceps are actually a shoulder flexor. That's level one thinking, and it's totally valid. Level two thinking, just above or below, depending on how you conceptualize these things, is the fact that bicep flexion at the shoulder in this position is not remotely a prime mover. So yes, your front delts are still involved, and the forces on the bicep are not very high up here, so it doesn't actually add a whole lot of stimulus. Totally valid. Check this shit out. Level three. Level three tells us, through lots of trial and error, and this is a, a little Jared Feather type of technique, is that if you curl like this and you get a ton out of it, that's totally fine and great. I'm not dogging on this method. But if you curl all the way up to the face, it can allow you to unload the movement which gives you a little breaky break at the top, which turns every single curl rep 
into kind of a Maya rep situation. So you curl all the way up, big squeeze. That squeeze at the top doesn't stimulate a lot of muscle growth, but it can enhance the mind-muscle connection. And you go from squeezing at the top to painfully introducing the eccentric in a slow fashion. And that sets your muscles up for an incredible mind-muscle connection. And also because it lets you take a little break at the top, you can add a crap load of reps that are all very close to failure towards the tail end of the set. Again, there is no 100% right way to do this. Both options work. They can just be two variations you use, or you can use whichever one you prefer at the time, or one of these just totally doesn't work for you and the other works great. Try them both before you write them off. They can both be super duper. This video is not an instructional guide for how to do bicep curls. We actually have that video if you search it through RP. We have a few of them. This is a targeting the muscle series video, assuming you already do the basics well to get you to that next level. This video is targeted at you, the viewer, that's like, look, I'm doing this exercise right, I think, but I fucking don't feel my biceps. I don't know what the fuck is going on. Help. Don't worry, we have heard your call for help and we're answering. So assuming you're not doing stupid bullshit like swinging around, you could still be doing your curls a little too fast on the eccentric. And it makes sense, it's super tempting. I'm tempted with it all the fucking time. If you're on rep number 12 of 14 reps and you curl up, no cheating, like no momentum, it's not really tempting to fucking painfully over three to five seconds control the eccentric and then do another rep. Fuck that. I'm trying to get up here and I'm trying to be like, bam, and get up again. So I can get the fuck out, stop doing these stupid reps, go home and rethink my life. But as I am rethinking my life, I'm not growing nearly as much as if I had considered, because I don't really feel the biceps much, getting that fucking nasty eccentric. So treat your curls to a little bit of anti-ego juice, patented RP product. Forget about how much weight is on the bar. Put enough weight in the bar that it's super fucking light. Embarrassingly light. Your gym crush walks in and she's like, Oh my God, are you like weak? And you're like, yeah, but I love you. Don't take advice from me on how to talk to girls. You've probably done already and that's for the best. Here's the deal, lightweight, normal curl. Five, normal curl and a five fucking centric section. Oh my God, awful. If I was doing this with weight, I'd quit right on camera. It can make a big difference. It can let you feel the living fuck out of your biceps. I've trained lots of people in person with this method. People who said, I don't get a lot out of uh, the curl and biceps. And after about the fourth rep of slow eccentric, they look at me and I'm like, are you feeling your biceps? And they're like, <laughs> stop crying and wipe that weakness juice off your face. You've got big arms to grow. It works really well. Give it a shot. Maya reps. What the fuck? That's not a technique. I know, it is a training modality. However, if you have trouble feeling your biceps, a lot of times it's because at the end of a set, it gets really tough and you finally start feeling your biceps. And then the set ends and it is over. And you look around, you see your gym crush walk by and you're like, and she pretends not to see you and you're like, okay, just, just me being me again. However, if you really wanna feel your biceps more, Try my reps, which means after you do like a good set of 15 to 20, put the weight down. It's great to have this, actually this exact setup. We have a bench, because if you put the curls all the way down to the ground, it's just fucking annoying, tiring for the lower back, etc. Put it down here, shake it out, rest like three to five seconds, three to five long breaths. Get the shit going again, pump out another very close to failure set whatever your RIR is for that week. Let's say two reps from fail. Let's say I get like six curls or something. After six, I put it down. Holy shit. Almost every one of those fucked my biceps up because I was already close to failure. Another three to five seconds and I go again. Same idea. How many of these to do? Start out with two or three my reps, which means one set of 15 to 20 and then either one or two sets just like that with three to five seconds. That'll cook you. Next week, add another one. Add another one, add another one, as recovery allows. That way you could get to like week four or five of your plan before deloading. You could have one set that starts the whole shit off and then like six sets afterwards of five to 10 repetitions each. Oh my fucking God. 
It keeps your biceps close to failure for like 30 fucking reps. It's brutal, it will cook your ass, you'll finally get big arms, you'll come up to that fucking gym crush again, you'll be like, hey, Stacy, the fuck's up with that shit? You should be like, oh my God, Rob. We'll just say your name's Rob for the purposes of this. And you're like, yeah, what do you want to do about it? She's like, I want to have sex with you, Rob. Those through sound too stupid, eh? And then her fucking head spins and you're in, baby. Satanist chicks get all the love. See you guys next time.